Today I will be doing a brief demonstration of the coin trunks, uh, which are the class 4 side of the whole coin system. And so in a previous video I demonstrated the different uh, demo lines, which are all at the class 5 level. And in that video I only made local calls, but if you make a long distance call um, and other types of calls that uh, are not local basically, then they involve one of the toll systems. And the two systems that are set up are ACTS, or Automated Coin Toll System, as well as CoinZone, uh, which is being used in a way that it typically was not. Um, CoinZone was typically used for calls that required more than the initial deposit, but they weren't, strictly speaking, long distance. Um, just additional message uh, message units. But, uh, in, in some cases, and there's an Evan Doorbell tape that goes into this further, it was used on short long distance, basically, short haul long distance calls. In this case, no reason we can't use it for a long distance as well. So those are basically the two things that are set up. Okay, so I've got the butt set hooked up again to this line here. And I can use headphones to couple for the red box. And I think it won't dial if uh, I've got two phones off the hook. Okay, so there's the demo line that uses ACTS. And... Uh, I'll go ahead and dial on this phone, I guess, since I have a choice. Um, okay, so I guess I do need to make the initial deposit, even on toll calls here. Okay, so we'll try that again. Okay, so there's our demo line. Uh, we'll deposit 10 cents. Okay, and now... Okay, so it's two dollars five cents for the first three minutes, just based on the number that I called. Um, dollars and five cents for the first three minutes. I have no idea how much that was. We'll see where I'm at though. Please deposit eighty cents for the first three minutes. Thank you. Okay, so now the call is going through. And I just dialed the D's on another switch. So that way you could dial back into my own system. Okay. Okay, so I just dialed into a conference bridge. Uh, I could probably hop in on another line. Um, and so, okay, so here I am. And uh, so the way that it works is uh, the, I don't know what you call it, the base period. It's, it's not the 
I guess the initial period. Initial period is three minutes. So that two dollars five cents is the I guess base rate for the initial period of three minutes. And then after that you go into overtime where for every for each additional minute beyond that it's another I don't know what's gonna be on this call, maybe something like forty cents probably. Um, an additional forty cents for every minute thereafter. But with overtime Instead of having you to pay for every single minute and having the ACTS system come back on every single minute, that would be really annoying. So you can uh, prepay your overtime for additional overtime, basically. So you deposit a dollar and twenty cents for three minutes, for instance, and then the system would leave you alone for a couple of minutes and come back when it actually needs more money from you. Um, but it's all still prepaid, as opposed to more of a postpay. A type thing, just using that term loosely, where um, for overtime, you would have to flash back when the call is over and then deposit that. That's that's not how this works. Um, I don't have anything set up like that. Because, um, I don't know, it, it just seems like that's a relic from a more innocent era. I don't, I don't really think that would work nowadays. Um, people would just walk away and not pay for it. But, um, okay, so... Probably got another minute left here before the system comes back on the line and asks for more money. So, um, yeah, so as, as you probably heard, these are Pat Fleet prompts. Um, the original systems did not use Pat Fleet for ACTS, they used a different voice. Uh, the French Canadian voice that you may have heard before is the TOPS voice. Uh, from a Nortel top system, um, and TSPS was obviously um, a Western Electric L system uh, type thing. Okay, so that was Coin Collect right there. So in a couple seconds, we're going to get dumped on ACTS again. Excuse the interruption. Please deposit forty cents. Yep, forty cents. No, it's forty. Sense is not deposited within 25 seconds. Your call will be automatically terminated. Okay, so I can still talk during this last speak here, but let's deposit. Please deposit 40 cents for minutes. Thank you. Okay, and. The reason that it took, it waited a little bit there, is to give you that opportunity to prepay additional deposits so that if you didn't want to pay $2 right now for the next five minutes so that system would leave you alone for a little bit, you could do that. There is another coin collect because it's already been another minute if we're counting from the last coin collect, basically. So. Excuse the interruption. Please deposit 30 cents. Yep. yep, and it's 30 cents because I deposited 50 cents the last time, so it, it keeps track. Your call will be automatically terminated. I guess that was 40 cents. Um, I'll, I'll throw in your other right there. Thank you. Okay. So now we're back in the call. Um, and... Yeah, so that's a, a little bit uh, of a glimpse into the overtime system on ACTS and, and how that works. And yeah, I think that's pretty much all there is to it, really. Um, coming up here, I will not pay the overtime. So there's coin collect again. It's it's doing coin collect seven seconds before it kicks in, so that way you know that it's going to ask for more money in a second. Excuse the interruption. Please deposit 25 cents for the minute. So now we're doing 25 cents. Cents is not deposited within 25 seconds. Your call will be automatically terminated. I'll go ahead and deposit more than a minute's worth here. Um, I don't know how much money I'm feeding right now, but um, I think that was probably at least two minutes or something right there. Thank you. Yeah, so at this point, this it, point should it should leave me alone, leave me alone for, a for a little bit longer than it has, than it has in the past. past. 
and yeah, which wasn't really that really long, long to think about it because, because it took me so long, long to, put to put the coins in, in probably a good 20, 20 seconds from when it asked for it. That by the time that's all sorted out and ACTS leaves the call, you maybe only have 20, 25 seconds left before it's already asking for more money. So without the ability to deposit prepay for additional overtime in advance, then the system would be really annoying actually. But thankfully it's not quite how it works. And um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nicer, elegant way to deal with uh, that type of situation. I think the reason that uh, over time before this, you would just um, talk all you wanted and then flash to get the operator again at the end of the call and then pay for it then, is so that the operator didn't have to keep coming back in every minute, which would have definitely been annoying and very labor intensive. And since there was no automated way to do that then, um, but we could, I believe we could actually pay, do the same thing, pay for additional minutes in advance and the operator would, would make a note of that so yeah so now it's back on that was at least two minutes there i think that was two minutes so excuse the interruption please deposit 30 cents okay so we're doing 30 cents now um i'm not going to deposit 30 cents your call will be just so we see what happens here so I so should I play should once play more, and then I think it's going to cut me off. off. Please deposit 30 cents for the minute. Please deposit 30 cents for the minute. Okay, so I just get cut off. Your call will be automatically terminated. Okay, and it just disconnects the call, and that's it. So, and that noise you heard before that was the, uh, was the coin return, because if you had deposited coins during that time, um, at that point, clearly it wasn't enough. So whatever you had deposited needs to be refunded to you, and that's, that's what that is there. So that's basically the ACTS, Automated Coin Toll System, in a nutshell. So in this segment, we will take a look at the Coin Zone system and what that looks like uh, here. So Coin Zone is operator based. It's unlike Automated Coin Toll System, it's not automated. It relies on human operators. So we do have um, a coin zone automa um, automatic call distributor basically. Uh, the way coin zone would actually work is using cord boards. Um, I have it set up here so that you don't need a cord board for it, but the operator essentially only knows the amount that is required to complete the call. She doesn't know the number you're calling or your number or anything like that and the jacks on the cord board are just labeled with amounts of money deposited. In. So, or amounts of money required. And if the operator releases, that means that the call is good to go. So it's a very primitive system actually. And as you can guess, there are ways to freak the system where you can get a free call through if you know how to social engineer the operator, uh, namely pretending to, to hang up. And then as long as you can get the operator to release first, then your call will go through for free. So not super, not super sophisticated. But it's an interesting model that, that actually works quite well for this. So I've got my operator uh, station here. And so when a coin zone call comes in, um, I can answer it. I'll just, uh, well, well, we'll see how that all works in a minute here. Um, I get uh, dialed to on my Centrex line and I'll get the demo line with coin zone for a long distance. Okay, so we got to make our initial deposit now, or if we try to dial long distance, we'll just get the initial break recording. Okay, so now I'll dial a long distance number. And it's ringing in.
$2.05 for the first few minutes, please. Okay, so I'm basically asking myself for money here, but that's what an operator would answer. It, it took a little bit longer there because it actually tells me what the deposit is required. And I don't need to know anything else in order to process the call, just what the amount is. So basically when an operator jacks in, you know what the amount is. It's also displayed on the uh, operator terminal, which I don't have up at the moment. But um, that's basically all the information you need. So now I could go ahead and uh, deposit, uh, deposit some money here. And the operator will then count uh, the coins you've deposited and keep track of that. And this is all a manual process. So, and then once you've paid up and you're, the operator's satisfied, then to let the call go through, operator simply hangs up and releases. Okay, so our call's going through now. Okay. And I've just dialed into a conference line again. I can uh, hop on myself. But, um, yep, so there I am. And that's basically CoinZone in a nutshell. It's, it's not really super fancy, but it is a way of allowing operator calls, or not operator calls, sorry, long distance calls from coin phones that do have that human touch to it, um, that human element. So we've got the automated system, and we've got the, uh, manual uh, human operator system. So two different ways of getting coin calls to go through. And CoinZone obviously, uh, I'm going to hang this up. CoinZone obviously predated ACTS. ACTS would have come out in the late 70s, and CoinZone was pretty much going away by the early, early 70s. Maybe it was still around in the mid 70s, but it was probably completely gone by the time that ACTS came around and CoinZone was really just more of a bridge in the way that it, it is used here um, as, as TSPS and ACTS and better or more automated ways of handling coin calls came about. Um, so that's that's CoinZone, um, at least as it, as it is on the network. So CoinZone is... Um, or I guess I should say ACTS is used uh, with the dial tone first demo lines and anyone with a dial tone first payphone can, can use that. Because again, you don't need to use the demo lines. If you have actual coin equipment, you can directly connect to these trunks uh, and ACTS or coin zone using uh, feature group C trunk. But... Um, ACTS, obviously, since you're prepaying and potentially getting refunded, it only works with uh, with um, dial tone first. So you wouldn't use it with something like a postpay phone, for instance. That just wouldn't make any sense. Um, CoinZone is sort of like that too, but um, it's you can at least we have it set up so that if uh, it's a postpay phone. You inform the caller of the deposits and before, and then actually collect it when the called party answers. So, all right, I think we're at uh, overtime again. Okay, so I guess Brian came on here because I didn't get that quickly enough. Um, he wants 40 cents more. Thank you. Okay. So, and then we get another minute. And then 
you wouldn't use coin zone for overtime. This isn't really coin zone. It, this would just be the regular uh, operator handling coin calls, essentially. So it's not 100% a single thing. It's, in some ways, uh, a mishmash of different things. But it, 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 it works out nicely, so. And I'll let this time out and not deposit any coins. Please deposit 40 cents more for the next minute. And I won't deposit 40 cents so that uh, will get cut off. 40 cents more. Please deposit 40 cents more. I'm going to have to end this call due to insufficient funds. Okay, and then we get cut off there. So there's the, the coin zone and operator um, base system for long distance calls on the coin trunks. And ACTS is fully automated. And uh, I think if you dial zero, you can, well, that's TSPS. Although I think that, that was true too, that if you dialed zero or you didn't deposit, uh, it would go to an operator. But ACTS is the automated system only for dial tone first. Uh, Technically, you could use it with prepaying, um, dial or yeah, prepay coin first. Um, I don't, I don't think that was ever done, but technically, it's a logical combination. So there is a prepay demo line that does use ACTS, but the coin zone and manual operator system is is obviously more flexible as it can also support postpay phones. Uh, obviously coin first and obviously dial tone first as well. So you get that continuum there of different things and it's interesting how that how you can combine the class 5 side of things with the different types of coin lines with the class 4 side of things, ACTS, coin zone, what have you. Different ways of allowing your long distance coin calls to get processed.